Karen? Who oh, is you? What did she get? Front door were wide open down there. Oh, I just thought, you know, she, she forgot a key, she wouldn't want to wake me open. I don't know. She hadn't been back all night. Selfish little cow. Look, I don't need that right now, Mum. Well, what else is she? And then she bothered to phone you. What? Karen's phone. Karen McDonald going out without a mobile. What's going on, Mum? Mum, where's my brekkie? Serving seven till eight. Staff are going to the day job now. If you want an all-day breakfast, drive around the corner. We'll have been down quicker if we could get in the bathroom. I haven't got time, Jason. It's every man for himself. Yeah, tell me about it. I'm sorry I held you up, so to speak. You only had to knock. I'd be more than willing to let you in. You could have shared my shower cap. And I wouldn't be averse to you using my loofah now and again. And what's that when it's over? I believe it to be the correct terminology for a rather large wet sponge. Ooh, suits you, doesn't it? I mean, that's what you are, really. A large sponge and a loof. I'll take the large as a compliment, but I could get upset about being called a sponge. So what then? I think I've upset your brother's feelings. Yeah, I'm surprised you could find them. Breakfast? Come on, Jess, shift yourself! Some of us have got a day's work to do. Yeah, my mum A woman's work is never done, Chess. Oh, it's the holidays. No one gets up in their holidays. There's not to do anyway. That's where you're dead wrong. What's going on? It's a surprise. Oh, my mum's not leaving me again, is she? Don't be daft! You'd have to worry about that, sunshine. Me and her. We glued at the hip. <laughs> you can Ooh. say that again. <laughs> I'm going back to bed. No, you're not, Ches. It's outside in the fresh area. Now, come on. Marching orders. Merry Christmas, Ches. You are? You think Christmas? Actually, it's more your birthday. That were ages ago. I know, but it's took me all this time to save up enough for your special treat. Hey, hang on, Emo. Silla, I... Go on, Ches. Open your present. Present? Can you guess what it is? Have you got any ideas? Is it one of them home cinema things? Better than that. Better? Oh, come on, I haven't got all day. Whoa, is that for me? Well, that's the idea. Oh, what, you mean I get to ride on it? It's yours, Chez. You can do what you like with it. Look, it needs a full service first. But I thought if you've got a bit of spare time, you could come down the garage and learn how to do it properly. The gaffer says you can spend the day with us, seeing as we're a bit slack. Deal with you? Deal with the bike? Fantastic. <laughs> Come on, Craig, give us a push. Go on in, Chess. <laughs> Chess! What have you got this on for? I'm just thinking. What are we going to do? I mean, I was the one who forked out for the bike. Oh, Les, sometimes. What? Really? You can be a bit petty, you know, and it ill becomes your petal. Yeah, but... Tell you what, when that mood comes on you again, you just remember, joined at the... Well, I am sorry for bothering you. I hadn't fully appreciated the fact it's still the middle of the night there. It's just that your cousin, uh, my uncle Jamie, Jamie O'Connell, yeah, well, he thought you might be interested in getting in on the ground floor of this, having the principal keeping the money in the family, so to speak. Uh, not that you're a man in the need of money, which is why I... Um, oh, well, well, perhaps after a good night's sleep, how do you think you might, might feel then? Well, that's not a right nice way to be. <sighs> Up yours. Come on, Eileen, help me here, please. I'm desperate. I bailed you out enough times. What, like when you sold me out from underneath me? No, like with Todd. Who backed you then? But all right, I'll do the double shift, but I'm ringing out for a pizza for my dinner. Well, they'd have probably found it by then. Who's they? The police, I'm gonna go to the cop shop. Oh, you're wasting your time with them. Listen, take a tip from me. You wanna pop off down to the shopping precinct. She'll be in the front of the line for the autumn sales, you know, doing a bit of retail therapy. You don't get it, do you? Look, I'll get the lads on a lookout for her. I'm sure they'll spot her. A bereavement can be a very difficult thing. Lots left unsaid that should have been said. Lord said that shouldn't, and no way of making amends on that. And I felt very strange, especially if there's an history, as you said, of bad blood between mother and child. Well, that's just it. I can see it's not been easy for her. I gather they put her through a tough time, but that doesn't mean she can do the same to my lad. He's crawling up the wall with panic. 
All it takes is a phone call. Um, I mean, that's what marriage is all about, isn't it? I'm near right, although... there's sometimes more blue water between man and wife than there is twixt here and the land of Kiwis. Difficult thing to fathom. All I'm saying is... Am I disturbing something? Elizabeth was just telling me... Family business, Fred. You're right. I'll get cracking. What have you got a long face on for? You look as if you've lost a pound and found a penny. Penny would be nice. Is a cup of tea enough for me? No time for that this morning. I said there's no time for that. Betty's phoned in. There's something a bit iffy with the waterworks. I don't know. I don't like to press too closely on women's matters. So you've got to don the apron and rustle up something delightful for our starving wayfarers. I'm not here to make sandwiches. Why can't this do it? Elizabeth is paid to be ornamental and drape herself over the bar like one of them portraits of Lily Langtry over a Western saloon. Besides, I want something a bit grander than an ham sandwich. We are way out, garnish. You're supposed to be a master chef. Come on, show us what you're made of. Are you up for it or no? Good lad. <laughs> Here you go, mate. Oh, cheers, mate. Gagging for this. Hey, you're all right with a kid here, aren't you? Yeah, I'm fine. As long as he don't ask for a wage. Don't think I'd get that past the missus. <laughs> you don't get a lot past your missus, do you? Why? Any different to yours? Yeah. Hey, what are you doing? Got to check it out from underneath. Yeah, but... Well, can you jack it up for us, then? I want to do the oil change. Oh, you better look to your laurels, mate. We have to your job. Come on, ain't God all day. <laughs> you better do what the boss says. Come here, then. <laughs> the cops couldn't care less. They just shrugged me off. It's only another domestic. She'll find the way home. I couldn't get him to listen. Nobody would listen. Shh, Steve, mate, what exactly are you frightened of? That she's done something? Have you checked the hospitals? Every five minutes. I've got the local radio on in the car all day, just in case there's, like, an accident report. I don't know where else to... What about the cemetery, Steve? <sighs> what? Well... Well, I don't know. It'd be the first place I'd look if I'd miss my mum's funeral. There was a hair on my soap. You lost me, pal. A hair on my soap and it weren't mine. So? Where'd it come from, eh? It makes me sick to think. It's not doing much for me either. I'm trying to get my dinner down here. He wants me. Come on, give it a rest. Best check with the natives if their finely tuned taste buds are being satisfied. Well, after all, they've been weaned on Betty's art pot. It'll not be easy to match that. There'd be no sweat, Fred. I say no sweat. No wrong with a bit of confidence, as long as it's not misplaced. Now then, gentlemen, what do you reckon to today's special? Is it as good as the hot pot? I don't know, Fred. You might be on to something here. I could be sorely tempted. And I know you to be a man who's not easily tempted. Not be so much in the bun, any road. Now then, Jason lad, has it got your saliva dribbling? You were great, Fred, yeah. Well, it seems to have satisfied them as well, healthy appetites. It's a shame you're not going to be a regular. I put it on the menu. What would Betty say to that, though, eh? A man needs a good hot pot every now and again, but not necessarily every day, perchance. Anyway, it's not going to happen, is it? I mean, you'll be far too busy to nip over here in your dinner hour. Yeah, well, well, have you got another one left in the bag? I mean, I need to road test it myself. Well, you'll have to join the queue, Fred. And it might take some time. Game, do you think you're playing? I... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, so... I'm sorry. I thought you were. Right. What the hell? 
Nearly fixed it, Mum. Don't you move another inch! What are you doing, woman? Are you going to clear his mess up? Whoa. I'm not going to let nobody else go on it. It's too dangerous, unless if you're a real expert. The last thing I want to do is interfere. It's a minefield, is that? Is you a lad? At least phone him and find out what the hell's going on. I've tried that. It practically bit me head off when I want Karen. If you want time off, you go. I know what it's like to have a son in dark despair. Thanks, Fred. I appreciate it. Where would I go? No, I'm best off staying here, and then he knows where I am if he needs me. You're a bit more cheerful than you were this morning. It swings and roundabouts, Tracy. Lunchtime proved that. The burgers were a smash. I could have got rid of three times as many. Yeah, well, it's a shame you can't get some rich backers to try them. Yeah, you're right enough there. The way to a rich man's heart is through his belly. Yeah, well, he's hardly going to be coming in here for his lunch, is he? Hey, Kieran, can I have another one of them burgers? Sorry, pal. You should have asked earlier. Well, going to be a regular thing, is it? Nope, just a one-off special. Bit like his sex life for here. What do you say? No, no, nothing. It's a, it's a private joke, that's all. Yeah, well, I won't be stopping here. I'll go somewhere else where I find proper grub, eh? Have a lovely evening. Another satisfied customer. It's your charm that brings them in. And I'll be counting on that soon. Oh, yeah? When? Tomorrow. What? You're invited to partake in the top of a range Irish cuisine. A night to remember. Oh, don't waste your pennies on me. Is that Tracy Barlow talking? I'm counting on you and charm of those fat cats you were talking about. By the end of the night, they'd be throwing their credit cards on the table, trying to buy into my life. Oh, yeah? Where's this going to happen? Your place? Oh, that'll give it a real touch of class for sure. No, no. Let me tell you something that most chefs don't understand. No matter how well they cook, the final ingredient to a successful restaurant is inspiration. You've got to have vision. You'll see what I'm talking about tomorrow night. Just put on that red dress, baby. Hey, same again, Kieran. Oh, no, we shouldn't. We've still got masses of packing to do. Why, are you leaving the country? Nearly. I'm moving in with Dad. Well, that should save a bit on the heating bill. Now, do you want a drink or no? No, join them, pal. Now, hang on. Come on, come on. Come on, have a drink. Come on. Now, hey, look, steady it down a bit. Come on. No sign of the lot swan, then. What? Don't worry, she'll be back. All chickens come home to roost, the same as turkeys, I'm told. Back off, Fred. I were merely trying to offer a word of consolation from the wise. Has she not turned up then, Steve? Has Karen done a run it? Have you had an argument? What's going on here? Is there anybody that doesn't know? Steve, what's the matter? Is this you? Is what, me? What have I done now? Telling everybody my business. She merely mentioned it to me as a person who shows concern, that's all. Oh, yeah? Well, come everybody else knows, then. Steve, people are concerned. I just thought they might be able to help. Yeah, she's right, Steve. I mean, we're all here for you. So how long has she been gone? I don't know. A day. Was it a big argument? No, it wasn't a big argument. Oh, well, don't worry. I'm sure she'll turn up. Look, I've got to go and find her. Well, do you want me to come with you? I could help. I could take one of your cabs out if you like. It's all right. Don't bother. <laughs> Let's see Steve. She's right. You need to sleep. Come on, there's nothing else you can do. Well, anything I can do, Steve, to help you, anything, just let me know. <sighs> she does put your lad through the hoops, doesn't she? I mean, why is she so cruel to him? I think I'll treat myself to another drink, Karen, yeah? What's the point of me going home? You never know. Tracy could be right for once. You know, Karen could turn up. You end up in a car crash because you're too tired. It's not going to help anybody. So then once you have a few hours, Kip, and then we'll start the next, um... The next what, Dev? Look, I don't want you to come with me because I'm all right. I'm fine. I don't need you holding me hand. Edison, we'll stick with you. I'll be fine. Well, then sleep. What are you thinking, Steve? Same as you. Oh, no, you're wrong. Karen's not one to go and kill herself. How can you be so sure? Home, Steve, I live here. No, no, no. I mean, where have you been? I've been out of my mind worried about you driving past crash sites and cemeteries and everything. 
And you just waltz in and sit here like nothing's happened? Oh, plenty's happened, Steve, believe me. Oh, has it? Has it? Has it really? Like what? Like you decided to send your husband completely insane? Have you any I have you any idea what I have been going through? Sat in that car, the state I was shaking. Look at me, eh? Surprised it's not me that's ended up in intensive. Sorry. I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry. I made you a cup of tea. Oh, do you want a glass of wine? <laughs> ah, it's a good job we didn't defrost the fridge. But uh, where the hell could one have put the glasses? Any clues? Are you all right? Hey, listen, don't worry about the packing, babe. I'll get it done. I'm not. Hmm? So you're not changing your mind? So? I was just thinking mm -hmm. how lucky we are. It's OK, we can't find the glasses, but at least mm, we found each other. No, it wasn't easy. No, but we've done it. Mm. Well, let's drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Who needs glasses? Mm. 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 Let's just let it cool for a bit, eh? Where have you been, Karen? I've been here. What? Well, what's this? This is just a kid's picture? No, no. No, it's a beach at Rill. And, um, this is me building a sandcastle. I'll probably be about seven. And there's a boat on the sea, and and the sun shining. And what I haven't put in is like a big white tent, like a, a big white marquee thing. Probably here, a bit further down the way. And my dad bringing the painting just brought it back to me. This is the last place I remember being happy as a kid. So Karen's been to the seaside. Well, did she have a good time? Did she get herself some nice ice cream while her husband sat at home and went completely mad? Please, please, Steve, please just listen to me. Because this is really important. I mean, did you hear what I said? I said this is the last place I remember being happy. Up until then, I was happy. We were a happy family. Well, normal, anyway. And my mum, she goes into this big white marquee. And my dad followed her at first, I think, just for a laugh. I mean, he would have left me with someone watching over me. I mean, he would have done. He would have just abandoned me. And I could hear singing and everybody shouting the Lord's name. And it didn't mean anything to me. I mean, why should it? <laughs> you don't know when you're a kid that the world's changed, cos everything looks the same. And then ever so slowly, you just see that colours draining out of your life and everything is then black and white. Where are we going with this? Because after this, everything was God and the devil, good and bad, and everything little Karen did turned out to be bad. Like having a fag or looking at lads or wearing short skirts and nail varnish. I mean, but to tell you the truth, it didn't matter what I did because I couldn't find their God. So I had to be punished to be saved. And I tried, Steve. I mean, I, I wore my knees out praying, but it... He just wasn't listening. So I thought, well, what the hell? Might as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. But they were wrong, Karen. About their God, maybe. No, 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 no. They were wrong about the way they treated you. Well, yeah, that as well. But... So? So I was walking down the beach and I thought to myself, yeah, that's all true. I mean, they were really lousy parents, but what if deep down they were right? About what? About me being bad, about me being selfish. I never even a thought for anybody else. Always like one, one, one little Miss Greedy. I mean, look at the way I've treated you as a wife. What, some walking piggy bank just to get myself another pair of shoes? Or, or your mum, I've never give her a proper chance. Half the girls at work only smile at me for fear that I'm going to go for the throats. 
Everybody knows Karen, the selfish bitch, always on the make, just looking after number one. Karen, the girl who couldn't even be bothered to go to her own mum's funeral. You know, my mum and dad were wrong about almost everything. But look, they were right about the one thing that matters. And it's true. And it, Karen's bad. Oh, oh, look, hold on, babe. Well, I'm, 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 I'm trying to follow you here, and I know you've been through a lot, but I mean... Look at the way I've just treated you over the past 24 hours. I mean, did I give a thought for you? No, it was just Karen, Karen, Karen. And it's got to change. And it has to. And it's got to change now. What do you mean? Well, from now on, Karen MacDonald is going to be last in line. Just wait and see. Mm. Your tea should be okay. I'm gonna get you a biscuit. You wait and see, baby. From now on, I'm gonna be a real angel. <laughs>